If you'd like to talk about your own Bigfoot encounter, or if you're looking for help from a Bigfoot investigator in your area, email me at bigfootcrossroads at gmail.com. Up here in northern Arkansas, some serious stuff goes down. It's a lot of people that have seen crazy stuff, but unless you ask them directly, you'll, you'll never hear it. You put yourself out there where these things are, when they're out moving around, you're going to see and hear some stuff if you're patient. For as big as they are, they can be as quiet as a freaking mouse if they want to. I've been totally at these things' mercy. If they, if they wanted to snatch me up, they could have. Very easy. They can be right next to you and you will not know it. Jake from Arkansas. Welcome to Bigfoot Crossroads. Thanks for coming on. How you doing? I'm doing great, man. How are you? Doing pretty good. Um, enjoyed our little pre-show uh, warm-up conversation. Yep. We pretty uh, much solved all the world's problems before you hit record. Wrapped it all up. You know. Thanks yep. for listening, everybody. See you next time. Exactly. <laughs> so uh, why don't you introduce yourself to the listeners, uh, where you came from growing up as a kid and everything? I've always, uh, I've always lived kind of out in the country when I... From, from when I was born to when I was, I think, I think 11 or 12 or so, I lived in Searcy, Arkansas, out in White County. And I, we lived over by the Desert Bayou, which is pretty rural. It's just, it's just cornfields, and when you get past the cornfields, it's just swamp and nasty mosquitoes and water moccasins and just wild in its, in its own way. And then we... Uh, we wound up having a house fire out there, so we relo- re- we relocated up here to northern Arkansas, up here, about 20 or so miles from the Missouri border, and it's like a completely different world up here, because down there, everything's real flat. It's like a delta-type area. If you come up here, this is the Ozarks. You know, you got rolling hills and, you know, small mountains and, you know, nice, nice rivers and just very touristy and just it's very nice looking up here compared to down there in my opinion but all the stuff they show you on the commercials for tourism yeah exactly except when when you live here it's a little more boring but but yeah i've always always lived several miles down a dirt road no matter where i am just always i've always enjoyed that i don't like having i don't really enjoy having neighbors and talking to people and stuff like that so what were you like as a kid? What what kind of stuff were you into? Oh, geez. Uh, I guess, I, I mean, I, I guess normal, normal stuff. I was, I, I, me and my brothers were homeschooled. Well, it, 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 except for my older brother, he, he went to public school for a while, but eventually we all just went over to being homeschooled because that was easier with, for everybody with, with my dad's job and, you know. It was because we, we've always worked at night. We've always had like a janitorial business. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, when you're, when your life is at night, you don't really, you know, daytime doesn't really exist. Right. So you kind of have to do things a little differently. So we've, we've always been night owls and we've always done that. And we've, you know, have, we've had fun with that. And my dad was a very, uh, was a very like a Viking pirate kind of person. <laughs> he was he wasn't uh you know, he was a he was a great dad and I miss him. But he didn't really put up with any crap and he you know, he was he was a fierce man. Not I mean not like in a mean way to right. his family, but he was you didn't mess with him and his. You know, you, so that's kind of that's kind of the upbringing that I had from him. Maybe, maybe a little bit too much of that rubbed off on me for my own good. <laughs> <laughs> I've gotten into trouble a few times, but, but yeah, I mean, that's, you know, that's about it. You know, you, you, I didn't grow up, especially, you know, thinking about Bigfoot or whatever all the time, you know, I've watched Harry and the Hendersons like, Oh, that, that's cool. You know, that was about it. You know, I didn't know anything about it growing up. Never heard any stories or anybody having sightings or anything like that no just uh my dad worked 
I guess when he was younger, before he had kids, he worked in uh, in Texarkana, somewhere around Boggy Creek. If I understand, my, my, my details are a little fuzzy, but and he would tell stories about you know, oh, there's there's a they they made a movie about a monster down there, and it's like some kind of Sasquatch or something. And I thought that was kind of neat. You know, when you're a little kid, you're like, dude, that's a monster. That's cool. Let's go get it. You know? Yeah. I guess it's kind of a big deal down in that part of the country. Yeah, I would say so. I've I've heard a couple things about it. Yeah, but other than that, you know, I knew about as much as the next person. You know, I watched the Boggy Creek movie, thought it was creepy, and, you know, seen whatever little movies here and there about it and thought it was neat. But, you know, you don't, it's not like it's something that you, know, you just think about all the time. So how old were you whenever you uh, discovered that Bigfoot was a real thing? Well, uh, we moved up here after that house fire. We moved up here about 2000. Geez, my memory's not great. It was like 2002 or three, something like that. So we moved up here. I thought it was the neatest thing in the world because this is where everyone like if you lived in Searcy, you came up here like for a weekend vacation because this was like the cool place to be. So I thought it was super neat when we moved up here. But not long after we moved here, just a couple months went by and I had a very bad accident. I basically slipped and fell down a hill and bashed in my head on a on a boulder at the bottom of the hill. And I wound up being in a coma for about two weeks and I had to have brain surgery, and I lost one of my eyes. Jeez, man, that's I mean, like, like a movie accident. Yeah, I mean, I didn't like lose the eye; I didn't come up. Just my optic nerve got crushed from swelling, mm -hmm. so I only have one functioning eye. But anyway, with just the nature of the surgery that they had to do, I couldn't do anything for a year. The first six months, I couldn't get out of bed because I mean, it was like if you bumped your head on the corner, you would die. Right. Kind of. Thing. So, of course, you know, my parents were like, obviously very protective because I'm, I was like 13 or something and they, they know how I am. You know, I'm always <laughs> wanting to get up and do something that'll hurt me. It's like, I think I'm going to sneak out and go try to lift weights, you know, just something <laughs> stupid, you know? So, you know, they were watching me like a hawk and didn't let me get away with doing anything. And I had to, you know, there's an adjustment period to having one eye because everything's 2d now and you got to, but you know, your, 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 your body adjusts to it and it gets more normal after a while. So the, the first whole year that I lived up here, I did nothing outdoorsy is basically what I'm saying. Uh, just in the house playing video games or whatever. So after that, you know, I was itching to get out and explore, you know, cause like I've, I've lived in this place for over a year and I ain't got to do nothing I want to. So I got in the habit of having like little like uh, campfires out in the yard at night because, you know, we have our we live several miles down a dirt road and then you turn off that dirt road and go down another for another mile or so. And then there's our house back there. You'd never know it was here unless, you know, unless you followed somebody out here and you know, they told you where it was. Oh. You know, we, we got a we got an old oak forest out here and it's just hundreds and hundreds and thousands of acres of private hunting club land that no one's ever on and a bunch of private property. And, you know, it's, it's you know, it's just a cool place to live. If yeah. you're somebody like me, you know, I like being out here, but so anyway, I, you know, I finally got over my injuries or whatever and started trying to start, started trying to get back to normal around 14, I guess. And, you know, you go out and you have little fires and you think, oh, man, it'd be cool if we saw like a black bear or something. And, you know, my older brothers, my older and younger brothers would be out there with me and we'd be screwing around. And it was just a, it was just a day like that. And it was getting to where it was like in the twilight of the day where it wasn't completely dark, but the sun was down, you know. Mm hmm. And we're just sitting around this fire, just talking crap about whatever, me and my older brother. And we're probably 40 feet from the wood line, maybe less than that, but somewhere around there. And like a, this rock, this, like half the size of a basketball, 
a rock about half the size of a basketball, comes out of the woods and lands in the fire at our feet and just throws coals everywhere. What? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and, you know, my older brother, he had like a, he had a 44 Magnum on him because, you know, we were still kind of fresh to living up here and we were paranoid that like a, a bear or a mountain lion was going to come eat us at any time. And so we jump up and, you know, you immediately, you don't think animal when something gets thrown at you. We, we jump up and we're like, hey, you know, <laughs> somebody just threw a rock at us. And like, where are they? You know, we're thinking there's somebody, there's a person out there screwing with us. Right. And so, you know, we, you know, we're all, you know, young and stupid and acting tough or whatever. Like, hey, we're going to kick your butt if you don't come out. You better, you know, whatever. And we're sitting there talking smack like to nothing basically and we just hear like from the woods this like this noise that you would like hear in like a zoo like a noise like like this growl grunt that was like so like because we were walking out towards the wood line because we were going to like figure out who threw this rock at us so he's got his 44 magnum. I mean, he, he don't have it out. He ain't pointed at nothing. So we, we, we ain't looking to murder nobody else. <laughs> right. But, you know, we I'm just had it like, you had a little yeah. bit of, a little bit of courage. Yeah. With you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We were emboldened to approach the wood line, <laughs> especially since we thought it was teenagers. But anyway, so we get about halfway to the wood line and this thing hits us with this noise again. Like we don't see what's out there. We don't see nothing because it, it was dark enough to where the wood line was shadows pretty much, you know, like the wood line was dark, but you right. know, we still had a little bit, you know, we still had a little bit of light out here in the yard. This thing hits us with this sound that you like, I've never heard anything like it. Like you could feel it in your organs and your lungs and in your bones, this thing just rattled you. And so we just like, stop just like, it's like we hit a wall. We just stop walking and we just stare out at the wood line and do not move. Cause it's like, Dude, is this Jurassic Park? What just happened? <laughs> and we hear something that was, you know, pretty clearly on two feet. Just boom, 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 boom. And just, it wasn't, it was probably less than 10 strides before it was far enough away where we couldn't hear it anymore. So even after that, I'm not thinking Bigfoot. I'm just like, what the heck is that thing? And so, of course, we freak out and run back in the house and we're telling, you know, we're, we're telling everybody, you know, like, dude, there is like some freaky thing outside that crowd at us. You, know, like, you, you can't really explain that and like make someone understand what just happened. So, right. of course, everybody was like, oh, it could have been a bear. It could have been, a, you know, an ostrich or a Tasmanian devil or, you know, just just any <laughs> weird thing, you know. And, you know, you you can only tell somebody something long enough, you know, to your blue in the face and they're just not going to get it. Cause they wasn't there. So, so they just thought you were spooked by some unseen animal or something. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I mean, to, to be honest, that would be a reasonable response, you know, <laughs> other than what we were trying to <laughs> tell them, except the giant rock in the fire, but yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. No one really hindsight explained that <laughs> one yet. No one could really explain that one, but still just, you know, life moved on after that. And, you know, there'd be a, a few weeks or a month or so would go by before nothing else would happen. And of course, after this, I got real interested in what was going on because I'm like, there's something out here in these woods that isn't normal. This isn't like a normal animal. There's something going on and I've got to figure out what it is. And so me already being a night owl just from, you know, just from like our family business or whatever, I'm up all night every night with my head out the window listening. Just dead quiet and just seeing if I could hear anything. And most nights, you know, I didn't really hear anything. And back then I didn't really know what different animal sounds were. You know, I'd hear like a, like a fox or a bobcat and be like, yep, that's a demon, you know. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> yeah. What did your brothers think? Oh, my older brother was freaked out. Like he was with me. He's like, yep, that wasn't normal. Something don't, you got to have hands to throw a rock. And really it was the sound. Mm -hmm. It was that sound. Cause like that, this wasn't no like little animal that made this sound. Like you can't make a sound that it wasn't really loud. It was just 
deep, so much bass to it that I've never been hit with a sound that I could feel before in my life up until that point. I mean, it was, yeah, it was very, very bizarre to us. But, you know, it's like, what are you going to do about it? You know, it's just something that happened and you just kind of forget about it. You know, and he had a job working at a factory that he had just started. So he was busy all the time. You, You just don't, you know, we talked about it a little bit that day and then we just kind of forgot about it. So then did you ever build up enough courage to go back out there and try to recreate the scenario and get it to come back or anything? Yes. I started going out at night and having fires like, like pretty much every night. I would just go out and sit like at the corner of the yard, you know, maybe a hundred, 150 feet away from the house or something. Or I'd go down by the, by the old barn that's across the road and make a fire down there and just sit and listen for something to happen. And, you know, for, for the most part, nothing, nothing would happen for a long time. And I, God, I think this is the next thing that happened. My, uh, my brother was working, was working a night shift and he'd get home at around three thirty or so in the morning. I don't know if that's like second shift or, or something, but anyway, he, he would get home from, from work from his factory job at around three in the morning. And we're usually all still up and around at that point. Cause we're all just, you know, we're just, we're all just nighttime people, you know, from, 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 from the kind of work we've been doing. And he pulls up in the yard. I see his headlights. I'm sitting in the house watching TV, you know, being worthless. And he pulls up in the yard and sits there with the car running for like 45 minutes. And in my head, I'm like, yeah, he's probably just on his phone talking to a girlfriend or something. Like, I, I, I don't know what he's doing, you know. I don't pay him any mind. So after about 40, 45 minutes or so, I hear the car door slam and him like hauling butt running across the yard. I hear him jump up on the porch. He slams up against the door because I had it locked just because I was just being a butthole little brother. (laughs) I had the door locked. He slammed into it and tried to open it. So, and he's like freaking out yelling, like unlock this door right now. So I go over there and I unlock the door and he just played, he comes pouring in the door, just about knocks me over. I'm like, what the heck? Like, what's, what's your problem? What's, you know, where's the fire? And he, he had this like spaced out look on his face. And he looked at me and said, when I pulled up in the yard and my headlights hit the side of the house, there was a freaking monster looking in the bathroom window. Oh, wow. I know him pretty good and we're pranksters, but he was serious. I mean, he was like, it's like he just watched somebody get murdered or something. He was traumatized. And he had been sitting out in the car because he didn't want to get out. He he didn't want to get out and be in the yard because this thing was standing. And this window is like eight feet off the ground. He said this thing was like face level with it looking down into the window. Was there anybody in the bathroom at the time? Yeah, the jacked up part is my mom was like taking a bath. Oh, wow. Now, we had curtains over the window, but the thing was like like three or four feet from my mom. And no telling how long it had been there. And I was like, what Like, what do you mean a monster? Like, what does that mean? He said, I don't know. It was really tall on two legs and covered in hair. And when my headlights hit it, it looked at the car and then just slowly just turned around and just walked across the yard. And so I'm like, dang. (laughs) (laughs) So did at that point, did you kind of connect the dots and say, Hey, (laughs) well, at that point I started hitting the internet and you know, like how all experts are made, you know, YouTube videos. And so I, I start looking around and, you know, start trying to look at like different, like, like what, what is a Bigfoot and what does it look like? And, you know, you guess the information that I got, you know, was everything and nothing at the same time. Right. So I, I figured out pretty quick that if I was going to like try to figure anything out, I would have to like figure it out myself. And I had like heard like different recordings that people had. So I was kind of like, well, you know, maybe they sound like this. So I'm going to go out and try, I'm going to try to make these noises sometime. What did your parents think about all this? They were still just kind of, 
like, oh, it's probably a bear. You know, it's probably nothing. <laughs> just, <laughs> just more yeah, important just, things going on in life. Don't care. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, I mean, that never really got through to them at that point that there was like something, something that wasn't ordinary. So it's like there was something that's not normal going on. Right. That basically sparked my curiosity more. And, you know, I'm just this like dumb little like 14, 15 year old kid. And it's, it's driving me nuts that I don't know. Were you, I, like, you know, scared at all at that point? Because. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Know, yeah. You got the rock throw and the roar and all that, but now it's at your house. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. I mean, it was scary. But I, you know, I tried to not let that bother me. And, and you know, when you're young, you'll do stupid things, not realizing how stupid they are. Oh, absolutely. So, <laughs> when you're older, too. So, <laughs> you know, with me, I'm thinking, you know, I'm just here in the yard with the fire. You know, if something happens, I can surely get back to the house, you know. <laughs> But no, I, I could have been slaughtered and twisted in half at, at any time and nobody would have known. But other than like little noises and like getting a pebble thrown or something here and there, really nothing for probably a year. But one night I got I got a wild hair and decided I'm going to go sit up in this barn that's like kind of like just in the tree line that's pretty far away from the house. So I go out there probably 10 o'clock at night. You know, I've got, I've got like a 44 Magnum with me. I go out there with a folding chair. I say, I'm just going to go out here. I'm just going to be real quiet and just see what happens. So I get out there around 1130. I fall asleep in this chair. Now, is this like a... A livestock barn or a hay barn or what kind of uh, barn it, are you talking about? It's just, a, it's just an old barn that was on the property when we got here. Okay. Pretty much. And it had like a loft. Mm-hmm. And I was up in the loft part of it. Okay. So I was, you know, a good, you know, assuming I'm safe, you know, I was a good, you know, eight, nine feet off the ground, something like that. Yeah. So I fall asleep up there. Probably around 11, 1130, something like that. And... You know how when you're asleep, you can just kind of wake up like really like explosively, like it like like something like touched your foot in your sleep, <laughs> and you just like jump. You know, yeah, yeah. I wake up like that in this chair, but just about break the chair. I wake up so like freaked out and violently, and I don't know why. I think maybe I was having like a bad dream or something and didn't remember it. But I wake up like in a panic. Now, you know how in the loft of a barn, there's openings at both ends. Mm-hmm. There's like these little window type things. I'm sitting in front of one, maybe like four feet from one facing out because it was facing over like a small open area. And I was thinking if something happens, I'm going to see it. I start looking out there all paranoid and freaked out and I don't see anything. I don't see anything moving. And there was a little moonlight. So, you know, and my eyes were adjusted to the dark real well. I don't see anything. Now the hairs are standing up all over my body. Like I've never ever felt like this before. And it just finally, like this creeping feeling comes into my mind to look behind me. I didn't want to, (laughs) I didn't want to look, but I slowly like adjust my hips and start turning my head to look behind me. And God, oh my dude, I'd never, I'd never felt like if you would have been there, I'm sure I would have went like white as a sheet. But when I turned around and looked, there was a guy in head, a big freaking head at the bottom of that loft window looking at me. I couldn't see a lot of detail. I just, I knew there wasn't like something there that was there before. There's just this. And I could see like hands up on the, like the floor of the loft with the head look like it was like holding itself up. Mm-hmm. And dude, I, I freaking lost it. I jumped up and started screaming at it. Like just in a total panic and the thing just like popped back down. And that's what, like 10 feet off the ground. 
Yeah, like 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 eight feet, maybe something like that. Because there was a little step below that it could have stepped up on, okay. like a little concrete thing. So, I mean, it was he, he, like a person couldn't have did that. How big? Like, you'd have to be. How big was the head? Would you say? It was bigger than a person would be. It was. It was. It was about twice the size of my head. Could you make out any details or anything? Not really, just because it was dark and it mm-hmm. was like more so silhouetted. I could tell that there was hair, but I couldn't like I couldn't see the eyes or the face or anything. Right. I just saw like a, I saw like a little bit of like a like shimmer from the eyes from the moonlight. I like it. It, it was the eye bothered me more than anything because if I, if I didn't see that there were eyes looking at me, I could have tried to fool myself and say that it was something else. Like no, that's like a that's like a tree limb or something that was there, and you didn't know. But no, this thing had eyes. And it blinked, and it had hands and freaking fingers. And the jacked up part was, in the middle of the loft, there was a ladder to go down. And there was a hallway, like, running through the middle of the barn with the ladder there. This thing was standing at the entrance of one of one of the ends of that hallway. So for me to go down, I, you it's know. It's going to be there. <laughs> yeah, I ain't. So in other words. <laughs> I ain't going down. <laughs> so at this point, I'm like, I'm going to die. I'm going to die up here in this barn. And whatever that thing is, is going to eat me. Like my, like my mind drew these conclusions extremely quickly. There wasn't like much reasoning and out. It was just like, nope. Yeah. I'm prey. That thing's a monster. And it was about to crawl up here and eat me if I didn't just wake up. And. You know, I go and I, and I look down the hole to to, to climb down in the loft because I'm like, no, man, I'm going to be brave. You know, you, you, you got to be like a Viking in the books that you read. You know, you got to you, you got to do something. So I go and I look down in the fight just went out the window. <laughs> yeah, I, I look down in this. I, I look down the ladder of this loft and it's pitch black. My mind's just like, nope, not doing that. You know. So I stayed up there all night. And I, I probably woke up at around one in the morning and that's when I saw the head and I stayed pretty much in the middle of the loft as far away from that hole in the middle of the floor and those two windows as I could. And you're and, 14, 15 at the time. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think 14 and a half or 15, something like that. I'm up there. I've got my 44 Magnum and I'm thinking, Dude, there's like more than one of these because I can hear stuff running around, but like something big moving around and making weird like monkey noises. Like that, that's what that's just what, what went through my head was like monkey noises running around this barn all night for hours. And dude, I just like I felt like a rabbit in a cage about to get eaten the whole time. I mean, like, you're it literally, at that point. Yeah, it literally crossed through my head. I've got six bullets. I'm going to fire. If, if these things come up here, I'm going to fire five and the last one's for me. Like I was that scared. Like I had never been that freaked out in my life. And it's probably around four 30 between four 30 and five. All the noises stopped and I didn't hear anything for a long time. I stayed up there till about 10 in the morning. Cause like, in my head, I'm thinking, man, th- these things are just hiding in one <laughs> of these waiting. little rooms in this barn. <laughs> They're going to wait for me to come down and rip me in half. I've but heard I, I've... stories of grown men, uh, older men, in deer stands and various situations where they have been absolutely terrified by the thought of a Bigfoot is down there waiting on them. I can't. This is one of the most terrifying scenarios I think I've ever heard since I started having an interest in Bigfoot. 14-year-old kid wakes up terrified in the loft of a barn and realizes that there's a Bigfoot down there waiting on him. Yeah, and like going, like in my head, I'm not thinking Bigfoot. I'm just like, monster that is a monster like i don't know what a bigfoot is but that is a monster right 
because you know like you're, you're when you're when you're panicked and you're like in a in like a fighting adrenaline death mode you know you, your brain doesn't think that logically it's very like basic and elemental just mm-hmm. yeah this is what has to be done it has to be done right now you need to be over here in this corner you need to be watching these entrance ways and you know just yeah it that was the most exhausting night of my life definitely up until that point because i came home and i slept for like two days like the adrenaline from the whole night was and you know the messed up part but i didn't say a thing to anybody I didn't tell anybody about it. I just completely kept that to myself for it, it was years and years before I mentioned that to anybody. That's interesting because that seems to be kind of a a common thing in Bigfoot encounters, at least the ones where the person involved is in a really scary situation and it's a very emotional thing for them. Uh, being terrified, for instance, um, they, oh, yeah. they don't tell people. Uh, they do keep it to themselves. It'd be like if you were in Africa out in a tent and there, you know, there was a pride of lions circling you. I mean, you just you know you're going to die and there's nothing you can do about it. And you just get that through your head for so many hours. It's just. But like by the time I came home, I had I got some sleep and had I had a little time to think about it. And I said, I'm not going to tell anybody because in my head, I was like, they're going to tell me that I can't go outside and look for these things anymore. <laughs> if I say something like this happened, even if they don't believe what I saw, they're going to think that there's something out there and they're not going to let me go out anymore. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's especially after this, I had to know, I had to know what they were. Like I almost could not sleep. I was so, like obsessed with these freaking things at this point because in my head those things shouldn't shouldn't exist there was all kinds of crazy thoughts running through my head like i wonder if there's like a government base out here and they're <laughs> like doing island of dr moreau stuff you know just just anything just i just had to know because when something like that happens your world is never the same again you know, you, you, your world is never again that like monsters don't exist. This is what's real. This is what isn't. Right. No, that, that I don't live in that world anymore. I never will again. Why didn't anybody tell me these things were out here? Exactly. It's like, how do people not know about these? Like, th- if they're this bold, you know. And then I got to thinking a few months later. It's like, ah, people don't people don't talk about these because I bet they just kill people and (laughs) that's why you don't hear about them you know because but i don't know i just so after that i i kind of ramped up my quote-unquote research i started going out i started i started moving from the yard into the woods at this point at night and from here on out for several years it was all night every night all night every night Every night that I could get away with it, unless I was like about to die sick or I had to work or something, which I usually didn't at this point in my life. I didn't have to work during that time of the day because I just like mowed yards and crap. But I had the freedom to go out there and do this every night. And that's what I did. And that's I, I had to do it. I can't explain that to other people. I try to explain it to my wife and she looks at me like I have two heads. And just like I'm a crazy person. Yeah, but you can't imagine how obsessed you can get with something when you see something that shouldn't be real. It's like you you have to know. I mean, you just, you have to know what they are. So, what was your next big plan after that? I mean, I just you know I saw that the barn thing kind of worked. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, hey, I just keep putting myself out there. I mean, I won't. Yeah, you know, I'm just gonna. So you're using yourself as bait. Kind of. Kind of, I, I, I had somewhat talked myself into that. If it really wanted to get me, it would have, Mm -hmm. you know, I, I don't know that that's true. Maybe just my, you know, subconscious knew that there was something sneaking up on me and just the way your body works, it, it woke me up or something. 
But in my head, I was convinced, no, it was just watching me. It was just, just curious about me, you know? Now you said that there is, you could hear more than one at the barn. Yeah. I heard more than one at one time. There was at least two just circling the barn all night. Like make, like if you're like, go to a zoo and listen to the apes, that's what it sounded like. It just sounded like monkeys running around. I mean, it wasn't loud and obnoxious like right. every second, but it was like, yeah, it, it, it sounded like monkeys down there. So, yeah, that was that was probably the scariest thing that happened. Well, I mean, <laughs> it, it, at least for a while, <laughs> <laughs> it'd be pretty hard to top that one, um, yeah. especially with your age involved and everything. I'm just still trying to. It's just interesting. It's very interesting to me. Um, because I'm just thinking about the chain of events in your life at this point, you know, your, your house fire, you guys move to a new location, you have your accident, you go into a coma, you're like, you know, pretty much bedridden for a year healing. And then as soon as you start going outside at this new house, Oh, you have this happen. Yeah. Yeah. What the, you know, and, Honestly, at this point, you know, you, you, you bring up the head injury thing at this point, I was seriously considering that I might be crazy. I, you know, that, that, that thought creeped into my head and, and at that point I was thinking, okay, the only way I can confirm that this is actually happening because, you know, I'm thinking maybe I damaged part of my brain and I'm like seeing monkeys now. I like, you know, do you think I, that I was know, part you know? of the obsession that you had and the reason that you kind of tackled it head on. Yeah, that, that, that definitely factored into it. Cause I had to prove it to myself. I had to prove it to myself and to get answers. Yeah. So after that point, I started trying to prioritize as often as I could doing some, doing this stuff with someone else with me. So I could confirm like, did you hear that? Did you see that? Which I eventually, uh, after we lived up here for a couple years, I uh, made a few friends that were around my age. And the next really memorable thing that happened, of course, you know, I, I spent, you know, many, many nights for a long time just campfires out in the woods, like sometimes a mile or two out into the woods away from my house, just me stay out there all night, nothing would happen. Nothing. Of course, you know, I'm, it, nothing that I noticed anyway. There could have been one, like, standing behind me the whole time, and I wouldn't have known it. But So that I wasn't really discouraged from that, but I was like, dang, like, what, you know, what's the deal? You're going to crawl up in the barn and get me one night and then, like, just not exist for six months, you know? So the next thing that happened... I had a friend of mine over at the house, you know, and, you know, he, he, he would come over and spend the night all the time. Cause he was, he was homeschooling too, too, at that time, you know, so we had free time to goof off and he liked doing stuff in the woods and all that, you know? So we, okay. <laughs> you have to, if you don't know us, this is going to seem weird, but this is just our sense of humor. We were, <laughs> we were, uh, cause you know, we have like hills and valleys through here that you can echo through real easy. Uh -huh. You know, the Sanger, you know, the Sanger tiny Tim yeah. got that real, like I got that real annoying, like, hey, you know, voice Tip through the tulips. Exactly. Me and him got this idea in our head that we were going to try to like, you know how you can like two people can like synchronize the, 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 the pitch of their voice. Yeah. And like your voice is kind of blend. We were doing that out into the woods with a tiny Tim song, like just to be stupid. And we thought it was like the funniest thing to hear it at Hill. Oh, I, I, God, we were, when I'm, when I'm saying this out loud, we were like really stupid kids. So like, this was a night I wasn't thinking about this stuff at all. Uh, I was just out there enjoying myself. The weather was nice. Just hanging out with my buddy, you know, we're doing, and we're, uh, we're around where the old barn is. You know, where, where the stuff went down a few months before that. And we're making this funky high-pitched noise out there. And, of course, you know, you hear an owl or something freak out and B-52 
be making calls back or whatever. We were doing that for like five minutes. And there was like a freaking like explosion of something just freaking out in the woods not too far from us. Like maybe like a hundred feet back in the wood line. And we were maybe a hundred feet from the wood line, kind of like back in the yard. Something just starts screaming like this. It wasn't a human. This was some kind of big animal just starts screaming and roaring and starts snapping trees like big trees. Like it sounded like shotguns going off. And of course, you know, we take the hint and shut up and, you know, we're just looking at each other like, what the heck was that? Because, you know, to me, I don't know nothing about how these things really act. I just know what I've seen so far and that's it. Yeah. So this thing's out there snapping trees and screaming and just, it just starts like charging our direction and it made it very clear it was coming our direction because it broke everything that it could reach while it was coming and it was coming fast. Now, did your friend know anything about what had happened to you or anything? Not really. I'd like floated the ideal by him a little bit, but I didn't like want to, you know, he was like a new friend. And yeah. I didn't want to like, you know, hit him with the Bigfoot bomb. You know? <laughs> it's like, Oh, I'm not going to this guy's house anymore. He's crazy. But yeah, this thing comes up to, I would guess about where the wood line is and doesn't come out, but it was very clearly something gigantic trying to run us off. And like it, this thing sounded like a freaking T-Rex coming through the woods. It sounded enormous. And again, the noise it was making, like you could feel it in your chest. You could feel it in your bones. It was, yeah. So we like, obviously like took off and ran back to the house. And so like, that was one thing that was kind of a big deal for me because that was something that happened when someone else was there. Yeah. So I, that i was like yes i'm not crazy this is happening this is a real thing but yeah that was that was another interesting thing that happened so we stopped singing tiny tim in the woods <laughs> and made a note of that one yeah yeah let's 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 write that one down <laughs> yeah that was a that was another big thing i mean of course like in between these big big things that happened there'd be little stuff but nothing just like noises and like catching like little glimpses of something moving from one tree to another, but you can't really tell cause it's dark, you know? And Did you have any more sightings after the barn? Yeah. Yeah. We ought to, I'd be sitting out like, cause over the years you kind of figure out, you know, you, you slowly start to learn like, you know, wh- what they're doing every night, where they're going, kind of how they act. And, I don't know if it, this might just me being like, this might be me being naive, but I feel like over the years they got used to me being around and they would start doing stuff and being a little more like almost like playful and bold. If that makes any sense. Mm-hmm. Cause I mean, I, I, I eventually stopped carrying the gun. Because I noticed when I go out without the gun, stuff would happen closer to me. So I don't know if they could, like, smell it or if they just, like, could see the way. Because, like, you know, a big Ruger 44 Magnum, it, you can't really hide that on your on your body. It's a gigantic pistol, you know. So, I mean, yeah, whenever I would go out w- without the gun, more stuff tended to happen. Like, I would see more things. Like, we have a pond out here. There'd be nights that I would that I would sit out like in a tree stand or something, or just find a spot to hunker down in where I could overlook the, the pond and you could see big tall figures come down to the pond and eat frogs. Now, of course this is all at night. So there's not like any, you know, like super clear definition, but it's those big thing. That's like eight or nine feet tall. 
that you see and it's got arms and it's grabbing up frogs out of the you know like off of the off of the bed of the uh not the bed but like the uh like the uh border of the pond yeah right there at the bank yeah so that's something that they would do not every night but they do that often and there's a few little valleys back in the woods where i figured out that they would stay a lot and at this point i'm thinking that they're vegetarian like other but like of course like other than frogs and like maybe fish or something like i'm thinking that that, that maybe they just eat bugs and frogs and stuff and that's it but a few years go by i mean not even a few years it may have just been like the year after we're out in the yard and we have a bond like a like a uh, like a brush fire you know, because, you know, we'll have like an ice storm or something and it'll, you know, all the limbs from all the trees in the yard will fall on the ground. You got to like, scoop them all together and burn them. You know? mm-hmm. So we got this big fire going in the yard. It's like maybe 11 at night or something. And I think at this point it was like me and my mom was out there. And we got this big fire going. And we start hearing again like monkey sound and noises like like excited like look up videos of like chimps when they hunt the kind of noises they make it pretty much sounded like that pretty much and it wasn't that far from the house we heard those noises and i see because you know this fire is pretty big at this point it's lighting up like the whole yard it's, it was probably way too big and unsafe but anyway we see two deer come running out of the woods and run right past us out and of the woods, behind, into the yard, towards a fire. <laughs> yes, towards towards people and a fire and run past us. And we're standing there like, dude, that's weird. And what are those noises out there? And I hear these, you know, you keep hearing these like excited noises. And they're, they're, they're back in the wood line, but it's still not that far away. It was maybe, it was less than like 100 yards away from us that you could hear all this going on. And you hear, I heard a deer like make their bleep noise. They're, you know, yeah. I heard a deer like start screaming, make that like make their little noise like that, and just start screaming. I've never heard a deer scream until that. And when the deer started screaming, those other noises got louder, like excited sounding. Mm-hmm. And I heard like a a weird like bone crunching like whoop, boom, sound and the screaming stopped and the noise and the rest of the noises stopped. And that was all I heard that night. And that night I figured out that they are not above hunting. Right? Cause I didn't think that they hunted animals up until this point, but I, and then I, I went out there and I was looking around the next day and I saw where like on a tree, there was like blood and deer hair, like five foot off the ground. So I think what happened was they grabbed this thing and just flung it up against a tree. And that's how they killed it. And that was the sound that I heard. Wow. I mean, that, I mean, I didn't see it happen, but that's right. kind of what I, that, that's what I figure they did. So that was again, what was your another mom's reaction to all this? <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't like me telling this story because her reaction was when all the noises stopped, I turned around to look at her and I said, did you hear all that? And when I turned around and said that, I heard the door closing on the other, on the other side of the yard. <laughs> <laughs> so like she was done before any of that happened. So yeah, that's, I still give her crap about that. Like, Oh, you abandoned your baby boy. How dare you? Did anybody but, else in the family ever have a sighting or anything after your older brother? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, my younger brother would catch them looking in windows. Like he's the one that has like seen their face really well. Cause he would catch them like with their face up against a window looking in. Now, of course he was like little man. He was like maybe eight or nine maybe even younger than that. He might've been like seven, but you know, he would start, you know, he would just come running in mom and dad's room screaming and just hysterical. And just that there was a monkey face in the window, you know, and I didn't like, 
talk to him about this stuff. You know, I mean, I told him like, yeah, don't, don't you know, try to sneak out at night like I do. Cause you know, there's, there's stuff out there, but so he would, he would see him like that. And, you know, I've asked him about it years later, you know, he's like a grown man now. I've asked him about it and he's, you know, he's, he's still, he's still firm on that. Like, yep, there was, I saw a monkey face like more than once just staring in the window, just this big nasty looking this big nasty looking thing that looked like some kind of deformed monkey is, is how he would that's, that's how he described it i mean it's really creepy but you hear so many stories uh from children where they catch them looking in the window at them yeah it's weird because no one else would say that but we would kind of like put him like during like certain times of the day for like a short period of time we would put him like in the living room watching cartoons and of course that was the only time cartoons were on is when he was watching it because everybody else was grown and the window that these things would look into you could get a straight shot at the tv huh. so i almost wonder if they were just like watching cartoons if they thought like the tv was interesting or if they were watching him wondering if they could snatch him up and eat him or something like i, I don't know what they're thinking but i just thought it was always odd that they would always be around when it was just him in the room watching cartoons. Yeah. Uh, but I don't, I, I, I don't, I don't know what to think about that. Maybe other people have ideals, but I don't know. So how many do you think, uh, there were, and do you think this was just one particular group that lived around there and how many were there? I think it was the same group. And over the years, I kind of got it in my head that there was about, it was between like six and eight of them. And I think the numbers would vary because sometimes you would see smaller ones and other times, like not, not like, like little, like baby ones or nothing, but just ones that were like shorter and scrawnier, almost like a, like the, like a teenager compared mm -hmm. to an adult, you would see smaller ones and then you wouldn't see them anymore after a while. And just, I think, the alpha he's the one that you never saw i think he's the one that charged me and my friend when we were doing the tiny tim stuff <laughs> and because if that that didn't happen off and the other ones wouldn't act like that I, I i believe there was just one and he was and i believe he was the alpha that was the big one that would be the one that like put his foot down if something was happening that he didn't like of course like er i never saw anything during the day never this is always at night and i didn't I, like i had a flashlight with me but i never turned it on because i didn't want to like spook them i, I mean I, I didn't know how they would react if I, I didn't know if they would just like go berserk and attack me or something if i turned on a flashlight but i just i just tried to be chill just let them do their thing, and I'd be back at a distance, and I just hope that they just let me watch. And sometimes you'd see kind of cool stuff. You'd, there was a, there was one time they were out like in, kind of some tall grass. Like to me, it'd be about hip height, but I watched because I was up in like a like an old tower that's kind of by my house that I guess they use for like like ham radio or something. I don't know, but it, it was here when we got here. There's this big tower that you can climb up that you can see a lot. Like, you, you know, it's like above the trees and everything. Mm -hmm. And there was one time I got to watch two, like, smaller ones kind of run around and play kind of down below me, uh, like a few hundred yards away. That was kind of neat. I, I I guess they were playing that. I mean, that's what I assume. They were just kind of like horsing around, like just chasing each other, and one would stop and like slap the other, and then run around some more, and they just take turns doing stupid games like that. And I don't think for a second that I ever snuck up on them. I think any time that they were around and I could see them, they knew that I could see them, and there was probably one watching me. Because these things, you just don't, you just don't go sneak up on them. They they know everything that's going on. You don't. Your your best bet if you want to if you want to try to be around one if you or you want to have something happen you know, is to just go out just put yourself out there and just see what happens. 
and hopefully you don't have like an aggressive group or something. But other than the uh, original incident in the barn, did you ever have a time where you found yourself in a situation where you thought like, uh oh, I may have uh, screwed up this time? Not like that. Not like that. That one was probably the worst thing that happened. There have been times where I've been out in the woods and I'd been hunkered down and I thought I had like a decent little hiding spot. Like I'd be up under like a cedar tree or something. And cause you know how that, you know, it kind of like lays down except when it's close to the ground, I'd be up under a cedar tree and I'd, you know, be thinking that this might be a trail that they would come down and I'd sit there all night and nothing would happen. And I would like go to leave and there would be something that would just walk away right behind me that I never saw sneak up on me. I never heard. I would sit there in the dead freaking quiet for hours and nothing. There'd be leaves everywhere. I don't know how the crap this thing got up behind me. It would be standing like 10 feet behind me. And when I would go to move, it would drop down and run off. Is that the closest you've ever been to one? Yeah. Yeah. I, I haven't, I haven't been super close. I mean, I don't really want to get I mean, close to them. 10 feet's pretty close. <laughs> well, I mean, but, but that wasn't my decision, man. <laughs> it, it's usually not. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's kind of how it works, but I don't know if they were just keeping an eye on me, if they thought I was crazy or like what was going on, but it just, it, it did become like a serious obsession for a long time for me. And I wasn't like out to like get pictures or prove anything. I was just wanting to find out what was going on. Was there ever a time where you were trying to get pictures or recordings or anything? I like one or two times I tried, but like it just didn't work out. It was just too difficult to try to do it. Cause like it was hard enough to get where I could see something myself anyway, you know, and, like I said before, me sitting here talking about this, people will listen to this and say, how does this guy have all this stuff happen to him? But this didn't happen over a weekend. This is like a 15, 16 year span I'm talking. And every, every time nothing happened, it was just boring. You just sitting out there just, just for nothing. I spent, I don't know telling how many hours just sitting out in the woods like an idiot. Nothing ever happened. I never heard anything. Just nothing. But, you know, that's something that I don't mind doing. I'm kind of an introvert. And I like, you know, I like being to myself where I can think and just whatever. But that's not for everybody. Not everybody can go out there and do that like that. Okay, this sounds bad, but up here, I figured out at some point that if I bring a new person out here that they're not used to, it will kind of kickstart activity. And so I would invite people over <laughs> that have never been to my house before. Of course, I wouldn't tell them this, you know, <laughs> but I, yeah, I've had several people come to my house one time <laughs> and they will not come back because almost every time I bring a new person out here, well, back then anyway, almost every time I would bring a new person out here, something would happen. They would see something and get really freaked out and not come back. I wouldn't say anything to them about any of the Bigfoot stuff. They would just like, dude, I just saw some really tall thing. Just walk from that tree to that tree. I'm leaving. I'm, don't ever ask me back over <laughs> here. Just like, like, all right. Well, thanks buddy. But yeah, one, one time I had a few friends over and we, we had started hearing weird noises. And th these were a, 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 a group of friends I was closer to. So they kind of knew, some of the stuff that was going on. So one of my buddies, he, he gets the idea. He's like, Hey, let's go out in the woods and let's all piss on a tree and see what they do. <laughs> that was a mistake because that night we went and did that. And about an hour later, we, it sounded like the freaking woods were being bulldozed by something like, ser like just pow, 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 just trees snapping and just, stuff getting thrown around and something back there growling and screaming. And so we listened to that for like an hour that went on for a long time. We really pissed something off. So we went back out there the next day and like this little walking trail that we went down to get there was destroyed. Like trees, like as 
you know, like trees as big as your like torso were pushed over across the trail. There was just stuff twisted and snapped in half everywhere. And it wasn't there the day before. Cause we were like just there. That's always one of the more impressive things to me. Uh, because one, I've experienced it. And two, I hear other people talking about it. whenever they do go in and just raise hell in an area and tear everything up. And you know that like, okay, this wasn't this way. There wasn't like a tornado that ripped through here. This isn't ice storm damage or anything. Just the, the amount of destruction that they can do and the amount of strength that it would take to do that. Whenever you see just like full grown trees, like splintered. Yeah. I mean, I, mean, I, don't, like, I don't know anything out in the woods that can do that. That's like African bull elephant strength. Yeah. Like you, you can't, you can't mess with that. There's no winning against that. Like I, like I've heard stories of these things, like slapping bulls and breaking their neck and stuff. It's like, yeah, I totally believe they could do that. I don't think they'd have any problem. It always kind of reminded me of what it looks like whenever a brush hog clears, you know, the side of an old road or something. Yes, exactly. It's like they want to get your attention. Yeah. I wonder why they react that way. Uh, I have no idea. Like, to me, they seem very, like, unpredictable in their moods. mm -hmm. Because sometimes, like, you could just be like, oh, man, we've been chill out here for months. I see one almost once a week or once every 10 days and they're just minding their own business. And then you go out there the next day and it's like, I'm going to twist you in half and kill you. You know, <laughs> it's like, and you're like, Whoa, what did, what did this come from? So I, I don't know if they're just, that might just be the way they are naturally. It might be, or maybe or you're dealing with, you're dealing with different in, individuals and don't realize it or something, you know? I mean, it could be us. You know, you might do something and not realize that you did it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, there's, there's you know, no, you could be peed on the wrong tree kind of, or something. Yeah, wearing a different kind of deodorant that makes them, like, raged yeah. at you or something. And there's no telling. My family all went to, uh, they went to church one, one, one Wednesday night. And I was homesick. I wasn't feeling good. So I stayed home. And at this point, it had been a while it had been like a year or two since i'd really heard anything major or like anything really happened out here so i'm laying in bed trying to sleep and my bedroom was situated up against the outside like at the end of the house like at the very end of the house and i'm laying there and at that time our house had like rock siding you know how people like you know do like the masonry and just do rocks all over the yeah. house instead of brick. Something came up to the side of the house at around nine thirty or ten, and just smacked the crap out of the house. Smacked it so hard that the next day when I went out, like it had knocked down like a portion of the rock wall. Wow! And it took like years for us to fix it. It was messed up. So that obviously got my attention. So I jump out of bed. And I run outside with a with a spotlight, don't see anything. So I get the bright idea. It's like, hey, I'm gonna I'm gonna get up on the roof of my house and lay there and be quiet and see if I can trick them into you know coming around again or something. So I do that. I get up on the roof of the house and I lay there for probably 20 minutes. Nothing happens. And then I start like catching movement because my eyes wasn't really acclimated and I didn't have good like lighting that night. The moon wasn't real bright or anything overcast or something, you know, it, it was, mm -hmm. it was dark, but after a while you still catch, you, you'd catch movement going back and forth in the yard. And what it was is we had some pear trees that were coming in and they would go back and forth to these pear trees. I'm assuming picking the fruit because of most of it was gone the next day. So I watched that happen for the whole time my family was gone. And then when they came home, I thought this was super cool because I'd never seen them do this before. When they pulled down, when they pulled off the main dirt road and started coming down here like a mile away, or like half a mile, something like that, you know, 
it was it was, it was enough to where you could hear it because it's so quiet out here. Right. When they pulled off and started coming this direction, you heard a whoo, whoo, and everything that was in the yard dropped down to all fours and ran off into the woods. And so it was like at that point, I knew it was like, dang, these things like have like watchers that make sure nothing sneaks up on them while they're off doing whatever. So that was kind of cool. Yeah. I've heard other uh, yeah. people talk about that sort of behavior. Yeah. I don't, I don't know if it's like something that all of them do or just like this group did or whatever. And people don't realize how whenever you're out in, you know, the country like that away from the city and away from highways and everything. I mean, you can hear a car coming from a mile away. Oh yeah. I mean, it's just dead quiet out here. You can hear anything. The last uh, big thing that happened was th this one. It, Cause you know, I, I told this stuff to my wife, you know, we've been married about five years or so at this point. I told this stuff to her and like, she's not, you know, she, she, you know, knows I'm not a liar, but she's like, I need to see it for myself. You know, I need to see or hear something for myself before I really, you know, believe it. Oh, buddy, this was the night that she became a believer. <laughs> okay. She was, she was about eight months pregnant with my boy. And, and, and uh, I have been having issues with one course that the, the, this was like five years ago about five or six years ago and this was pretty much the last of anything that anything happened around here i don't know i don't know if they left after this or what happened but okay you know with me working late i come home most nights of the week i come home it's still dark it's like maybe three or four in the morning the way our driveway is situated when i make a turn uh, my lights hit a thicket that's kind of across the like kind of across the road, and then I turn into the yard. All right, I had caught eye shine a few times in this one thicket that's kind of across from my house, and it was a little lower to the ground, but I could kind of tell because just the way they were situated and their color and how far apart they were, I suspected it was one of these things. And plus, our dogs have been having crazy trouble the last couple of weeks, like we felt like our dogs would like, like fighting and carrying on with something at night. And the next day you'd come out and the dogs would be, uh, like some of them would be limping around, like, you know, something smacked them or kicked them or something. You know, I, I knew something was going on. I suspected that it was one of these things, but I thought that it was weird that they were, that, you know, one was being like that. Cause usually they kind of give us our space. They don't really mess with the dogs, but, this one had been coming up in the yard and killing puppies because we had like one of our dogs had just had a litter and this thing would like, I would find them. The, I would find them the next day, like ripped in half. And some of them just looked like, like a big hand just took it and just squeezed them and popped them like a grape. I mean, it was, and some of them were like drowned in buckets. I mean, it was weird stuff. So I'm fairly ticked off at this thing at this point, And I, this wasn't long after my dad died and I was just, I was having like emotional issues already. Okay. I'm just setting up, you know, yeah. why I, why I handled this the way that I did. All right. I'm not suggesting anyone else ever do this or that I was doing the right thing. So from seeing the eye shine, I had a good idea of where it was staying at night before it would get up and come in the yard and start messing with the dogs. And, you know, we had had stuff like moved around on the porch and stuff too, which I wasn't, I wasn't having that, you know, it's okay for them to run around in the woods and do what they want, but I don't want them up around the house. So it was about two o'clock in the morning one night. It's happened to be my night off. So I'm sitting at home just, you know, like sipping beer or whatever, which is probably part of the reason I did this, but, uh, the dogs start going nuts, and I hear I hear one of my dogs yelping, which like to, for some reason just would be being already like an angry person right then, just dealing with my dad's death and just dealing with everything that was just like personal issues. 
I just got really freaking mad. And I just, I jumped up and I have a boar spear, you know, those big spears that they use for like hunting yeah. wild boar and like bear and stuff like that. Yeah. I jumped up, I grabbed that spear and I took off across the yard because I knew where this thing was. Or I, I knew where he, I knew that when I opened the door, it would go back there thinking that it was hiding. But I knew where it was already hiding because I had saw it. You know, I, I saw it with my car headlights, and I'd been out there during the day, and I saw where his little bed down area was where he would sit. So I run out there, and I go straight up to this area. And I am pissed off. I'm picking up rocks, and I'm throwing it at it. And my wife has, like, stepped outside on the porch and is looking at me like I've lost my mind. Like, she's, like, obviously concerned that, you know, I'm having, like, a breakdown or something. And so I'm screaming and cussing at this thing, and it's being real quiet at first. And then I pick up, you know, I was throwing gravel at it and stuff, and I pick up a rock, and I throw it at it, and I think I hit it with the rock. So that thing got pissed off after that, and it stood up. I could see it stand up. Of course, this was at night, so I was just going off of what little light that I had. This thing stood up and was just, like, pissed just real pissed, but I don't think it knew what to do. I think it was mad that I knew where it was hiding. And he thought that I thought that, that he was being sneak, like sneakier than he was. This freaking thing stands up right there in front of both of us and just starts like stomping his feet and huffing. Like I can't do the huffing sound. Cause like these things are like way bigger and that deeper voice was like, <laughs> <laughs> like, like that, but way more intense, way more deeper and more intimidating. This thing starts grabbing branches and stamping it around it, and I'm just, I'm not having it, man. I'm ticked off. I'm like, you going to come get me? Let's do it. Let's do this right now. Because in my head, I'm thinking, either you're going to come and you're going to kill me right now, but if you get me, I'm going to put this freaking spear in your chest. You know, something's happening right now. Which, again, this isn't normally how I act, all right? Right. I was just, I was just in a bad state right then, and fortunately, this thing didn't call, didn't call the bluff, and it just threw a fit, stomped around, growled and huffed at me, and threw a fit, and ran off in the woods. It didn't run off, but it just stomped off slowly, like it was upset, you know. And I could hear, I could hear it going off for a while. And my wife was right there and saw and heard the whole thing. Wow. And and after that, she's like, I ain't going outside at night. I, ain't, you know, ever since that night, every window on the house is covered in tinfoil and trash bags. <laughs> like she ain't ha like, no, these things are not going to be looking in the house <laughs> doing anything. Uh, something else I almost forgot. There's a couple of nights after that. We had heard, I think I heard two of them fighting after that. I don't know what it was. I have an idea what might have happened, but I think I think I heard an alpha kicking him out of the group. Is think what I he think. got scolded? Yeah. I think that he got kicked out of the group. Because me and my brother, because we were working together at the time, we pulled up in the yard. This is my younger brother now. Of course, he was like a grown man at this point. We, we pull up in the yard, and we're just talking about whatever, like a movie or something, you know. We step out of the car, and we immediately hear, like, way, like, a couple miles back in the woods, because we got, you know, the hollers and stuff, and you know, sound carries, mm -hmm. basically. We just hear this, oh, like a tornado siren going off back there, and we hear something. Like, we could literally, like, hear and feel something smacking the ground. And this was a long way off. I don't know what the heck was going on, but we heard, like, it sounded like if you had, like, two King Kongs and they were going after each other. Wow. Just, like, roars and just, it's, it's something violent was going on back there. And that went on for a little bit, and after that night, nothing. Nothing. It's been, like, six years like five or six years and nothing. I don't know if they left or if they just kicked the troublemaker out of the group and now they're more cautious about coming around people 
or what's going on. But after that, there was nothing. Well, I mean, thank goodness that one didn't call your bluff. And thank goodness oh, yeah. it sounds I mean, like it, it was alone, me. you know? Yeah. Oh, yeah. He he, he would have had me. I, I wouldn't have did anything to him. He would have just snatched me up, smacked my head off or whatever they do. Just, just I was, yeah. <laughs> but again, that's one way to prove them to your wife. Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, again, kids, don't try this at home. A lot to process, man. I mean, again, it sounds like a lot, but when you're talking over the course of, you know, a big portion of your life, it's not as exciting as it sounds just sitting here talking about it all at once. You know, it's a, yeah. lot, of, it's a, it's a lot of nothing most of the time. And the, like I said, the past several years, it's been nothing. I feel fortunate for living in an area where they were and having having the ability as long as I did to go out and kind of do things on their turf, like be out at night every night and not have to, you know, just having, just having the freedom to do that because that's not something everybody gets to do. Not everybody gets to spend that much time out with these things like that. Do you plan on ever getting back into it? God, man, you know... <laughs> like we were talking before you know with the world being the way it is you know kind of look for an escape mm -hmm. and that's you know it's just something that i think about more lately uh I, i've been recently like listening to more podcasts or you know youtube shows about them trying to just trying to get myself in the mood for it and me and one of my buddies that i've known forever who lives in kansas city now me and him have always had this dream of me and him going to the lbl and spending a weekend just goofing off for fun. And yeah, it, 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 yeah. I, I would definitely like to get back into it, but I don't think I can ever catch lightning in a bottle again the way I did before with the situation I had here. Do you think you'll uh, tell your son about it? Yeah, yeah. He's he's gonna know. Yeah, he's he's five years old, and he already knows that there's monsters in the woods, and he can't go outside. Like, I don't let him look out the windows at night. Like, <laughs> I've really drank the Kool-Aid on the whole missing 411 thing, and that's what, like, really freaked me out when it comes to my kid. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that. I mean, do you think these things will take a human if given the opportunity? I definitely think they have. I think, I, yeah, I definitely think a lot of people that go missing could very well be from these things. Now, I had my group here, but there's another group that's still active about 30 miles from here that, dude, like, I know people that live out on this particular road. It's over around the Hardy area, you know, where Hardy, Arkansas is. Yeah. It's, it's in that vicinity. And this road is kind of like mine over here. It's way out in the woods, and these people have shot and killed them before. Oh, wow. It's, it's been that bad. Like, and they've showed me pictures of them. Like, it's, it's legit. Uh -oh. like they, yeah, <laughs> you said yeah. the p word <laughs> yeah i don't it's have like, the pictures no like, he can't get the pictures to show uh -huh. you so no no it wasn't like that but yeah it's yeah they got serious like problems with aggression out over there by the river like over around many islands people know where that is yeah that they, they, they don't mind just straight up attacking people running up to you knocking you down chasing you on a four-wheeler i mean there's crazy stories from over there but I, I wish i had more time to go over there and look around because it sounds sounds like it's bad out there so like it's bad enough to where there is an entire stretch of road about 10 miles long of like old dirt country road where everyone there just knows when the sun goes down you get in your house and you don't come out for nothing like it's that bad <laughs> over there <laughs> And, and from what I know, from the last I've heard it, that's still going on. But nothing out here with me, out here at my house. Did you ever come across anything uh, other than Bigfoot? Not, not, not out here. No, I had a, I had a some some weird stuff. Uh, one one weird thing happened in Cersei where I used to live not long before the, before our house fire and we had to move, but that was, if anything, that was like what people talk about, like a dog man. 
if anything, I think that's what that might have been. But I don't know, because that was just like one quick thing that happened. And nothing, nothing else ever happened after that. So I, I don't know. That's some, I, I don't really think about that a whole lot. In Cersei, I was, man, I don't know, like 11, something like that, 11, maybe 12. It, it wasn't long before we moved up here. I was, uh, again, you know, everybody worked at night. You know, I wasn't working at night because, you know, I was a little kid, you know. But, you know, when, when, you know, your parents and everybody else is working at night, the family just kind of switches over to nighttime or else you'd never see each other, you know. So it was a trash day the next day. And my mom, mom was me all day to, to uh, take out the trash. So me being the me being the responsible young man I was, I procrastinated for about eight hours and waited till midnight to take out the trash. Right. So I, uh, I go, you know, because we had like a fence around our house because we had a dog kennel where we, we raised and sold German Shepherds to like the police department and like, you know, for like family dogs and stuff like that because we had a little system set up where we could, you know, start start like a beginner's training for them as puppies, whether if they were going to be like for like a police dog or like a house dog because you can tell pretty young with a dog like that what, what their temperament's best for. So... Long story short, we had 12 German Shepherds, 12 grown German Shepherds in, in our yard. So, of course, we had, a, we had a big fence around the yard, a big chain link fence. And all around the yard, there was a, an oak forest across the, across the dirt road. Because there was the fence, the dirt road, and then the wood started. And on the other side, and wrapped around the house, was a pine grove, a pretty old pine grove. It's, it's it's not all there anymore, but it, it, like it 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 was at this time around like two thousand one or two or something like that. So I go to take out this trash at midnight, and I'm just it's not a care in the world. I uh, open the gate, drag the garbage out behind me, and throw it in the can. And down the road from me, down the down the fence line, I hear in the gravel something like push off the gravel and take off into the into the pine thicket now in my head because this is just what i was used to used to all the time is one of the stupid dogs got out and is running around the yard i i or, or is running around the woods i need to go try to get it i need to go try to get it and bring it back or else or you know it'll be gone for days and then you know because these dogs were expensive, you know. Mm-hmm. They, these dogs, went, these dogs, they went for a lot of money. So, like, even me being little, I knew it was a big deal. We got to get this thing back. So I just not thinking. I take off running after it, and it starts running down the fence line, which was butted right up against the pine grove, you know. So I'm outside of the fence, like chasing this thing, you know, like thinking that I'm chasing a dog down. And this thing is ahead of me moving. This thing's ahead of me, like kind of moving away from me. And I had a little flashlight with me. And I get like parallel to where our house is in relation to like the fence. And I hear our dogs whimpering. So I shine the flashlight inside the fence. And there was an opening like for under our house and all of the dogs, like I knew all of our dogs. And I counted them. Every one of them was under the house whimpering and looking at me like I was crazy. <laughs> and it dawns on me. It's like, oh, crap. This, uh, what am I chasing? I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not out here with one of my dogs. I don't know what this is. So I freak out and I, you know, scuttle back in, you know, I scuttle back in the yard and shut the fence behind me. And I'm like, wow, that was weird. I, I hope that wasn't like a bear or like a wild hog or something that could have killed me. So at this point, I'm thinking nothing of it. Just, you know, like maybe there was like another dog out there, something, you know, because I didn't see nothing. I just, I just heard it and assumed it was one of my dogs and took off. So I go back in the house. I'm sitting there doing homework or watching TV or whatever. And I hear our dogs freaking out like, just like, you know, I'm used to hearing them like bark at the mailman or the trash guy or something. This was different. 
this was them like totally losing it. And so I go outside with, with my little flashlight just to like see what they're doing because I'm thinking, hey, maybe that animal's back and I'll see what it was. You know, maybe it was like a horse or something, you know. And I stay inside the fence this time, but I go out to the part of the fence where the dogs are hitting and they're they're hitting the fence where the dirt road is and then there's woods just beyond the dirt road like just on the other side so anyway there's like our fence and like 15 feet away the woods you know and so i start like scanning scanning the tree line with my little flashlight to see what they're barking at and where i'm like looking kind of low at first and i don't see anything i make a few swipes back and forth maybe 15 seconds and I make one swipe, and there is something jacked up looking, standing up, really tall, leaning up against a tree. And this thing had big, tall ears on it, like one of my dogs, but like bigger and more exaggerated. It had a big snout on it that had like big, like amber eyes. That was like really reflecting the light, and this thing was jet black, covered in hair, and I saw it from about from about mid waist up. And this thing was just staring dead at me, like these like there's like a dozen German shepherds freak freaking out barking at this thing, and it was acting like they were not there. Wow. And it was just like staring dead at me, and this went on for like five seconds something like that and it just kind of popped down and I, like it, I could hear it ran off and that was it how did you process that like what did you think it was well I had no idea like in my head the only reference I had was a werewolf yeah but even at that age I was like werewolves aren't real that's stupid you had to have that had to be something else you know it, but it wasn't until like years later I was listening to like coast to coast AM or something and I heard somebody talk about a dog man and it was, it was a lady that described like a very similar situation to mine that didn't live very far from where we lived at the time. She too had a dog kennel of like Dobermans or something. And it pretty much did the same thing. It would just like walk, walk the fence line and just like harass the dogs and Mm. she would see it every now and then. So, yeah, I, I don't know what the deal with that was. That was very weird. But but that thing was totally different from the stuff I've seen up here. They they are not the same thing. Like, no way that they're related. No, they're different. And, like, I hear people on the internet talk about, oh, well, I wonder what would happen if a dog man versus a Bigfoot. If what I saw was a dog man, it wouldn't have a chance against these things up here even like a small one in, in my opinion because they can these things up here they can move they can move just as fast as anything else can and they are just god awful strong if somebody finds themselves uh, realizing that they share territory with a group of these things what's your advice on how they should handle it uh all that stuff that I just talked about the last however long we've been talking, don't don't do any of that. Don't don't do any of that stuff. If you think that you have them around, best thing you can do try to scare them off. They don't like loud noises and spotlights in their face. That will usually get rid of them. And have 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 a big enough firearm in your house. And don't, for, for the love of God, don't try to freaking feed them. Don't try to, like, leave them gifts. Don't do that. Because, you know, they, they you, you know, you, you might have, you know, the best Jane Goodall relationship with these gentle giants, and it'll all be great. But then again, you might get a violent lunatic individual that wants to bust down the door of your house and twist you to death. You don't know with these things. They're animals like everything else. Yeah, they're super neat. They're fascinating all that good stuff, but you don't want to be met, especially if you've got kids. Well, man, thanks for coming on and, uh, sharing these amazing stories. 
Yeah, man, I appreciate it. I, I like I said, I ain't got to talk to anybody about this stuff in years. I just, you know, if it, if it's not going on right in front of you, you just you just don't you don't ever think about it. Yeah. Life goes on. I, uh, you know, you and I have talked off and on for years about it um, and about you doing a show. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I've been lurking. <laughs> I I always kind of like didn't want to press you too much on your encounters or what you had experienced or anything, because I kind of wanted to hear it for the first time when we recorded and, uh, it was well worth the wait, man. Well worth the wait. Oh, I appreciate it. I, I look forward to having you on again sometime. We'll have to yeah, man, that'd be cool. set something up. Have you tell some of those other secondhand stories or do a round table or yeah. something? Yeah. Be Be sure to subscribe, follow, like, and leave a comment if you enjoyed the show. And as always, thanks for listening.